Hello and welcome to another video. So recently I started reading the selection series by Kira Cass and I'm loving it so much I've decided to do like a whole video for it. <laughs> Before I talk about it though, this is one of those cases where you really got to do your own research on the author and decide whether or not what the author and the people around her do is okay with your morals and if you are okay with separating the author from the works. So I don't know all of the details around this whole scandal, but a while ago somebody on Goodreads gave the first book, The Selection, a not so great review. And then somebody, I can't remember if it was, I don't think it was Kira Cass, I might have been her editor, just attacked her on Goodreads and was really horrible. That has caused a lot of people to kind of just turn away from the series and not read it and all this stuff. I didn't even know about the series when the scandal happened. I don't even think I was on Goodreads when the scandal happened. <laughs> not saying it's okay because I wasn't around for it. I'm just saying like it didn't hit me as personally as it did some other people. I'm choosing to separate the author and all of this from her works so that I can still enjoy the books. Completely understand if you don't agree with that. I get it. <laughs> Anyways, so I picked up the selection from Pango Books a couple weeks ago, I think. I don't exactly remember when I got it, but I was watching Haley Pham, who currently is really obsessed with reading. <laughs> she was reading this book and I've like never heard of it. And then I just kind of did my own research into the book and realized that a lot of people my age read this when they were teenagers and they loved it and compared it to The Bachelorette and stuff like that. And I love, 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 love stupid dating shows. <laughs> so I had a feeling this series was gonna be for me, but I didn't wanna commit, so I just bought the first one. I started reading it and I devoured it. I loved it so much. There's some obvious problems with it. Um, I ended up giving it four stars. The beginning is very reminiscent of The Hunger Games. There's some like problematic thinking in here and it's not the best. <laughs> the writing's not the best. This is one of those books that's kind of like candy or junk food or Taco Bell. Like you love it, you acknowledge how horrible it is, but you're addicted anyways. So this book is following America Singer who is very low in the cast system. She's a five and there's like eight casts and each cast kind of like goes further and further into poverty the lower you go. In this country we're being ran by kings and queens and stuff and the prince is of age where he needs a wife. And the way that they do this is they select 36 girls at random <laughs> and these girls come to the kingdom and they basically compete for the prince's affections and he narrows it down from 36 to six who are the elite and then from there he narrows it down to three or four and then chooses his bride from the three or four and this book is following the progress from 36 down to six but there's more there's also a love triangle america is in love and dating aspen who is in a cast right below hers which is very frowned upon you don't do it like you just don't do it in this world but she's in love and he breaks up with her and breaks her heart so that she will go and do the selection because she didn't even want to do it because she is already in love and she wants to marry aspen and he wants better for her so he breaks up with her and she gets selected and now she's trying to decide if she wants to have feelings for the prince and even wants to be a princess and even compete in this selection thing which she like disagrees with it's a fun time i'm really enjoying it at the end of this book i wasn't sure if i was team maxon or team aspen i just like i felt like i didn't have enough of either one of the characters to truly decide i was undecided so after i read that book i just I loved it like I loved it so much and I decided to go to the used bookstore that's like by the coast I was just looking for the second book like just hoping that the second book was there because I mean with used bookstores you never really know what's gonna be there and what's not but I was just hoping that enough people didn't like this book enough that they sold it <laughs> and I was right and I ended up buying the rest of the series and yes I am a little bit upset that this one is hardcover and the rest of them are paperback but that's that's just what ended up happening. That's what they had. And honestly, I wasn't gonna go out of my way to get the paperback when I got this whole series for like 20 bucks. Anyways, so then I started The Elite. This one I didn't enjoy as much as I liked the first one. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. So this book starts with the six girls that were selected from the 36 from the first book. I believe by the end of this book, we make it down to four girls. There's not much progress being made in this selection. And this book is mostly about America's indecision between Aspen and Maxon and which way she's gonna go because she's falling in love with Maxon, but she's still in love with Aspen. And it gets more complicated because now Aspen has been drafted to be one of the guards in the palace 
and so she sees him like literally all the time and now he's like fighting for affections and he's like sorry i broke up with you i still want you i still love you we can make it work and she's just like well gee thanks because now i'm in love with maxon so now you just made it more complicated <laughs> this whole time i was kind of going back and forth with america not really sure which side I wanted to be on. For the most part, I was kind of on Team Aspen, honestly, just because like they've been in a relationship for like two years before this. And I mean, I'm in a long-term relationship and we've been together for like eight years by now. The idea of being in a relationship for two years and then switching it like that, it's just like, I didn't really like vibe with that. So I was Team Aspen. But the more that he's in the book, the more I just don't like him. Like he's kind of, manipulative he's kind of selfish he's kind of just like does what he wants and like doesn't really care too much about how america's affected by it but then it was also hard to be team maxon because like yeah he was great and he was doing a lot of like great sweet things that were kind of romantic but he's also dating three other girls there's a lot of like jealousy coming out and there's a lot of like competition between the girls and it's hard to like believe that what he's doing with america is only for America and he's not doing the same things with the other girls. That's why I was mostly Team Aspen. But by the end of this book, no longer Team Aspen. No, go home. We don't want you in the books anymore. Get out. Like I'm done. I'm done with Aspen. Without giving any spoilers, I'm just done. <laughs> Towards the end of the book, we start to see why Maxon does the things that he does, and he kind of explains his motives a little bit more to America, and we can kind of see more of his personality. And yeah team maxon so those are the only two books i've actually completed i have not read these ones yet i did start the one i'm on page 87. i know by the end of this book whoever gets selected gets selected by the end of this book like it has to happen because these two books take place 20 years later and they're kind of like a companion series but with the same characters so they're counted in the same series so this is it for america like she needs to get her act together and she needs to decide what she wants to do because she's so wishy-washy and she's so annoying and she needs to just decide max and her aspen because this is it's driving me crazy <laughs> yeah going into this book i was very much team maxon but he's saying some things that are kind of making me go like maxon can you not all right so this is on page 27 so it just like to back up a little bit the king does not like america he doesn't want her to be the princess he just no he wants her gone and so he's been saying things to intimidate her which makes her kind of act a little bit different towards maxon and try to compete a little bit harder he kind of laughs at one of her attempts and kind of embarrasses her and she tells him that like that was embarrassing and he humiliated her and he says please america you've said and done so many foolish things i'm surprised you can even be embarrassed anymore <laughs> bro what it's just okay he says stuff like this and then later he's like oh i'm sorry i didn't even mean it and he like tries to make up to her and it's just like red flags this man toxic i don't know at this point you know 87 pages into the third book i'm not team maxon or team aspen or team america really <laughs> i love the drama i I love the story and I guess we'll just see where where this goes from here. I'm not sure about this lighting. We're getting some blinding sunlight right now. Anyways, I finished the one. This one I gave four stars. I ended up giving book one four stars too, but I don't see them on the same level. <laughs> I liked book one the best. This one is a very close second best and then book two is third for right now. I don't know how to do this without spoilers because this is a book three, but it's just gonna have some spoilers. <laughs> At the end, America finally, finally ends up with Maxon and there's so many will they, won't they, that it gets to the point where I just get annoyed and like just do it already. Like you think they're finally together, but then they like do something stupid and they pull apart again and it's just it's so annoying and by the time they finally get together in a relationship i feel like they're not couple material <laughs> also by the end of this book we're getting very heavy into hunger games territory um in the sense where a lot of stuff is happening with the social cast and a lot of stuff is happening outside of the palace i just want to know what's happening in the real world and we get little hints and glimpses maxon's like oh yeah i'm gonna get rid of the cast but like that's it like we don't get to see what happens after that we don't get to see the cast dissolve we don't see really anything they have an epilogue and the epilogue is just them getting married it's kind of like stupid <laughs> like if we're gonna have an epilogue do it like i don't know five years in the future when things have actually happened like 
the caste system is being dissolved, how people are handling this new world, this new society. I feel kind of passionate about this. Like I'm totally addicted to the series and I feel so emotionally invested and I feel just cheated by the end of this. And I know there's two more books in the series, but the two more books are 20 years later and it happens with their children. Like it's, do we get more of the society? Do we get more of what happens when the cast collapse? Because if the cast collapse, is there even still a need for a king? Is there gonna be a democracy? I think I'm thinking too far into this. Like this is just supposed to be a silly little romance. Anyways, I finished the book last night and I had all of, you know, today to kind of digest and think about how I was feeling about this book. And I think I just need a couple more days to process this and then I'll jump into book four. <laughs> With books one and two, literally as soon as I finished them, I like ran and got the next one so that I can start reading it. And I'm just, I'm not feeling the same compulsion to start book four. I mean, I will. I definitely will start this like very soon. But yeah, I'll update once I started this one. So I've started the air. I'm on page 44 and so far I'm not loving it. <laughs> um, I wanted to read these two books immediately after I finished the first three because I thought like I was really loving the world and I was really loving the characters and I just wanted more of that. <laughs> but this main character, um, Edelyn, I believe is how you say it because they call her Eddie, I think. Anyways, so Edelyn is a really unlikable character in the beginning and she's just really annoying. Like, I thought America was annoying, but she has this like moral compass and this like need to do the right thing. And Edelyn is so self-centered and she's so like pretentious. It's just annoying to read about her. She's such the opposite of America. Yeah, she seems to think that she's better than everybody else. She's like, I'm made to be queen, but also complains about being queen at the same time. I don't know. I don't know where this is going. When I read the first three books, I literally flew through them. Like I was reading them so fast that I couldn't like really keep up with good reads and stuff because I was just reading them so fast. This is the first time that I've put this series down and like not even read it all that day. And now I think I'm just gonna take a break and read something else because I honestly, I just need like a palate cleanser. Time for a mini update. I am very slowly making my way through this book. Like I'm honestly reading at the pace of a crawl right now. So I'm on page 100, that's it. <laughs> I've read maybe 20 pages in the last two days. It's just, it's getting so hard to read because Edlin is so incredibly annoying. I can't tell if she's just like a capital B witch or if she's an actual psychopath. Like some of the things that she does in this book are like not okay. Like it's just not okay. So she doesn't want to do the selection. I get it. I wouldn't want to do the selection either. I'd want to choose who I'm marrying. I get it. But the way she goes about these things are complete psychopath behavior. I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> she decides that she's going to do some eliminating. She remembers that when her father first did his eliminations, he got rid of six girls on the first day. So she goes, oh, I could double that. But she doesn't do it like a normal person. Like she goes in there so aggressively rude. And she's just like, she'll flick her hand at people. Some people she just says no. She's so rude. <laughs> oh, and this is how she justifies it. When my father is stern, no one chastises him. I don't think it's fair that when I act similarly, I'm seen as cruel because she is cruel. Like, is she literally just that out of touch with the reality that she doesn't understand that she is being cruel? She's not just being tough. She even says at the time those things had seemed kind of funny, like... <laughs> so this is what a reporter says to her after this first elimination. Yes, but why were you so harsh? For a few you simply said no or flicked your hand. But one of them cried after you left the room, she informed me. What? I asked, worrying that my face was growing paler by the second. Bruh, <laughs> does she just not know how other people's feelings work? I just, I don't understand. So she does stuff like this all the time where she plays with people's emotions and she doesn't really care about anybody beside herself. Like she's so self-centered. And then she's like, oh, well I have to be tough cause I'm gonna be the queen. Like girl, <laughs> nobody wants those behaviors in a queen. We don't, we don't want it. I just keep like telling myself that hopefully this is just a character arc and she's going to develop and she's going to get better and she's going to learn the errors of her ways but i read a ton of goodreads reviews and everybody's just saying she doesn't get better like this is not an arc this is her personality and i'm really hoping that's not true and they're just dramatic <laughs> otherwise i'll never make it through the next like 250 pages or so also at this point in the selection there's like 24 boys left i think and i only know like three of their names and i get there's still like a lot of boys that are left 
but I'd like to be able to kind of be on certain people's side and kind of root for certain people. Already there's a couple I have in mind that I am rooting for and one of the boys that she kind of like has a soft spot for, I'm not liking her reasoning for having the spot, soft spot for him. So like one of the boys, Henry, is, I can't remember exactly where he's from, but he like English is not his first language and he has a translator with him. And the way that he's described is like, oh, he's so innocent, he's so pure, like the way he just doesn't understand English. Like, girl, this is coming across a very, um, mm, prejudice feels like a strong word. <laughs> but it's coming across in not the best lighting, if you know what I mean. And I don't like the way that Edelin is just kind of like, feels like she has to protect him. Because what? Because he doesn't speak English? Like, stop with the- stop. <laughs> stop i'll try not to update again until i finish the book i'm sorry about the lighting i know it's just not it but this is going to be quick i promise so i made it to page 180 and this is where i'm going to be closing the book <laughs> let me tell you why so edlin is just a terrible human being she's spoiled she's self-absorbed she's completely out of touch with reality does not care about another single human being she like messes with people's emotions and purposefully instigates and then wonders why they're upset. For example, this page 180 was the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> so she's talking about her maid who has a boyfriend who's in college and she's asking what her boyfriend is studying and the maid says he's studying biochemistry. She says, really? Such a range in your professions. Automatically, that seems rude. <laughs> like just don't say that to people. Like don't remind people where they are status wise like just just don't she frowned there's no caste system anymore your highness people can date and marry anyone they want to i turned away from the mirror to look at her directly that's not what i mean it's simply intriguing to me the dynamic you must have you have my laundry in your arms and he might cure a disease there are two incredibly different roles in life Edelin! Nina swallowed and dropped everything on the ground. I won't be doing your laundry forever. I made a choice to come here and I can leave whenever I like. I don't feel well, she said abruptly. I'll send someone else to help you. She didn't even curtsy. Like that's <laughs> direct quote. She didn't even curtsy. The nerve of Nina. Nina, I was simply talking. The door slammed and I looked after her, shocked that she so shamelessly left without permission. I finished my hair and makeup on my own. When the substitute maid showed up, I sent her away. Just because Nina was in a bad mood didn't mean she can get out of her work. I could take care of myself and she can clean tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> this page shows Edlin's true personality and we're on page 180, we're halfway through. We should be having some character development by now and we're not, she seems to be getting worse. And I cannot force myself to read another 180 pages plus the second book, like I just can't. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been since I've picked this book back up again but i picked it up today and i was on page 178 i read to page 180 and i was like no this is it i can't i cannot read this anymore i can't deal with this spoiled brat and how she's gonna be queen one day and at the end we're all gonna be like oh yay Ellen! she picked the best person she could pick and she's gonna be queen no no <laughs> i don't root for her i don't root for any of the boys america and maxon are complete idiots for raising this fool i don't understand like okay America and Maxon, their personalities in books one through three would not have created the spoiled brat. So what happened in the past 25 or so years that created her? What happened? This book is just, it's, it's not good. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm done. I'm done reading it. I'm done with this. I'm going to put this book down. I'm going to put it back on my shelf and take it off of my TBR for right now. Take it off of my currently reading on Goodreads list. We'll call it a DNF for right now. Maybe I'll revisit it, but it's not going to be anytime soon. I just can't. And I'm so mad because I feel like it kind of taints the last three books because I loved the last three books. Like those were, those were bad good. Good, good bad. <laughs> those were a fun time, even though they were terrible. This one is not a fun time, it's just terrible, terrible, and I don't want to read it anymore, and I want to read something else. <laughs> also, just like a quick little comparison, I read books one through three in a week and a half, probably. I've been reading this book, this first 180 pages, for like two weeks. Enough is enough. Alright, that's it. Goodbye.